Many people turn towards spirituality on their journey towards personal growth and happiness. But despite what many people might think, the start of your spiritual journey isn't the cessation of dissatisfaction. It's the amplification of it. This is something I've come to see only six years after being on my own spiritual journey. Even though I'm now better able to process my emotions and communicate and have a deeper level of understanding of spirituality and a much clearer vision for how I want to contribute to the world, I still feel just as dissatisfied with life as before, if not more. What I've come to learn the hard way is that as you become more self-aware, you realize how much there still is for you to learn, grow, unlearn, and heal. To desire to grow is to desire for things to be different, for you to be different. It's never settling for good enough and always striving for bigger, better, stronger, wiser. Growth is a constantly moving goalpost. Once you begin this journey, you're in it for life. This means that if you want to keep on growing, then you have to be okay with always being dissatisfied. As Marcus Aurelius put it nearly 2,000 years ago, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. The only way to grow is to do and experience things that make you grow. And that implies doing and experiencing things that cause you pain and suffering and leave you feeling dissatisfied. But that doesn't mean that you have to actively seek these things out either, though you can if you want to, because they're a natural result of these two things the passage of time, and an increase in awareness. Just think about it. Your closest relationships, which bring you the most amount of joy and love, are also the ones that end up bringing you the deepest worries and the most grief. Your car, which when new, causes you immense pride and satisfaction, makes you feel inferior as soon as it gets even the slightest blush. Your youth, beauty, and athleticism, which people praise, eventually fade and leave you feeling like your best years are behind you. If you'll notice, the common denominator here is a simple progression of time. Likewise, if you think you know a lot, then you only have to meet someone more knowledgeable than you to show you just how little you know. If you think you're outgoing and have a lot of friends, then you only have to see someone more popular than you to start feeling otherwise. If you think you're emotionally mature, then you only have to reach your next point of conflict to realize how much you still have to learn about emotions, yourself, and others. In these scenarios, the common denominator is an increase in awareness. Having said this, it can be easy to start thinking that time and increased self-awareness are the villains, but I don't think this is the case. First, because you can't stop the passage of time, no matter how convenient that would be, And second, because higher self-awareness isn't all bad. It brings with it a better understanding of the world, yourself, and others too. And though you'll eventually become dissatisfied even with this, you'll at least also feel a greater sense of peace, confidence, and inner strength. So just accept that you'll never be satisfied with life and stop complaining. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) Well, kind of. (laughs) I think there is a way to end your dissatisfaction, and ironically, that is, in fact, to accept that you'll always be dissatisfied. To adopt an attitude like Marcus Aurelius's and recognize that if you can't change the facts, then you might as well use them to your advantage. Because the thing is, as humans, we're much more motivated to run away from negativity than to run towards positivity. So negative emotions and situations, though uncomfortable, are awesome catalysts for change and incentives for growth. But even this answer might not be satisfying for you. I know it wasn't for me, because it doesn't coincide with what I believe to be true, which is that you can reach a point in life where you're no longer plagued by dissatisfaction or feel even the slightest bit of it. So what gives? After sitting with the feeling of incompletion that my original conclusion left me with, I came to a deeper realization, a conclusion that left me feeling satisfied, for now. (laughs) And it's one that's been reached before, by Buddhists. The end of your dissatisfaction is the end of your bondage to the ego. 
It's the ego that always wants to be somewhere it's not. To reach the destination and for everything to be done. To be able to say that it accomplished something, finished something, crossed something off its list. But the spiritual journey isn't like that. The quest for increased self-awareness doesn't end. It has no destination, no culmination. And that's hard for the ego to accept because it requires something that it can never have. Humility. Since everyone is on their own path, no path is comparable to another, no matter how much the ego wants it to be otherwise. You can't get to the finish line faster or climb higher when there is no way to make a comparison, no way to even measure your progress. You can't be good at something that has no end or any rules. But that's exactly the point of the spiritual journey. To be okay with there being no rules, no clear path, no definitive goal, no concrete finish line. The point is to walk the path simply for the sake of walking it. When it comes to spirituality, the good news is that there is no wrong way to do it. The bad news, according to the ego, is that there is no right way either. We write our own rules, choose how we see things, and assign whatever meaning we want to whatever happens in our lives or not, because we have the ultimate power. Life is a choose-your-own-adventure, and though that will always be uncomfortable for the ego, because it will always fall short, disappoint, and dissatisfy, it doesn't have to be uncomfortable for you. If you like this video, then you'll probably also like the video that I'll link in the end card. It also speaks on why discomfort can be a good thing. Before you leave though, leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of the spiritual path. Is it worth it? Does it leave you feeling better or worse than when you weren't on it? And what alternatives have you found that work for you? I would love for this to be a space where we could all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you guys have to say. Also, if you liked this video, then hit that like button, and if you really liked it, then subscribe so you can catch all my videos as soon as I drop them, and so that they can reach more people. As for right now though, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Looking for a sign to know I'm on the right road. Ain't seen no signs in Jericho's place.